What's up guys, Sheldon back with another review, and today we are looking at the super action statue Leon Abaccio from JoJo's Bizarre Adventure Part 5. Alright, let's take a look at the box real quickly. So here we go, I believe it's mostly like black, grey, dark blue or purple pattern. But some of the poses you can put him in, the accessories he comes with, you got a display stand and an alternate head. We got some box art. Box window right here, so let's take a look, and some more box art. All right, let's take a look at the accessories a little closer, though. So here you go. Here's a nice little visual, and we'll take a closer look right about now. All right, so first of all, he comes with this alternate head. Let me get that to focus. Cool. So he comes with this alternate head right here, and this face he has. The uh, Moody Blues face, so that's kind of cool. On the forehead you have the like bit recording times, so that's really nice. Uh, the hair is all soft plastic here, so it is flexible. These are a little more stiff, but these are pretty soft right here. Overall pretty well done here, nice dry brushing. Wow, and the hair actually looks like little strands, and you got some shading on the top too, so very, very cool. A nice metallic sheen. And the eyes actually have those little dots kind of sculpted in there like speakers. That's pretty nice, even though lips are painted. All right, and then it comes with these two extra hands also. Uh, these are also the Moody Blues hands, so they're the same thing, so I'll just use one hand because it's harder to do it. <laughs> I'm holding both, so there we go. You got the speaker hands, nice fingers over here. All right, uh, let's just go back over here though, but he's got more interchangeable hands right here. Uh, and each side are, is actually a little different. Uh, he's got a relaxed hand. He's got this kind of like mm -hmm. other relaxed hand. He's got this gripping hand right here. And he's got another relaxed hand. And then he has two pointing hands. One with his thumb out and one with his thumb mm -hmm. just relaxed. Okay. Uh, but this one right here. Whoa. Flop it around. Uh, he does come with one relaxed hand though that has a peg in it on the ring finger. And that is for the teapot. So it comes with the teapot and a lid. Uh, but for this one, you just peg the bottom of the thing to the bottom of the teapot. You can get him to hold it. That's pretty nice. Get the focus. There we go. So you get a really nice holding pose right here. And then, of course, the top comes off pretty easily. On the inside, you've got some tea sculpted, so that's pretty cool. He also comes with these two little tea water? I don't know what they're for. I think you're supposed to like put them in right here, but then the angle for the tea doesn't feel quite right, because if you're pouring it out, it would be like this, right? But it hangs down like that, plus there's no solid way for them to stick, because if you just let it go, They'll stick to your hand. <laughs> no. uh, they'll usually just fall off right here. So, come on. So they kind of just hang on very loosely right here. So it's not that great. Uh, and he has another one right here. It's a little thinner. And same deal. If you peg it in to make it stay, it's just like this. But I mean, that's not how tea is poured, right? Like, look at that. So it's kind of a natural. Kind of hard to stick in, so I'm not quite sure how you're supposed to use that. Uh, you can use them to create the scene where Abashi was like peeing into the teacup, though, I think. So that's kind of cool. Speaking of Abashi, let's take a look at the figure itself then. All right. Cool, let's get a quick height measurement. He stands about. About a little under 16 centimeters right here, which is about six and one fourth inches. So actually some pretty decent size. And here he is next to Moody Blues. And he's actually, let me see, about the same height. He might even be a little bit taller. So that's kind of unusual. His stands are usually bigger, uh, but then again, his stands not like big and buff for fighting, so I guess it makes sense that it's roughly the same height though. All right, so let's take a look at that articulation really quickly. So the head is on. Let me get this out of the way. Uh, so the head is on that hinged ball joint right here. So here it is going up. He 
here it is going down so going down is a little better uh, because these are softer but going back the hair does get in the way so you can't make them look up much uh, and the neck is on a single ball joint but I don't know mine is really tight so I don't get much motion at all I don't know if you can see it's moving that's really it and that's really it so most of our articulation is going to come right here at least for me so that kind of sucks uh, okay, for the shoulders, actually, let me just take off the hair, because it gets in the way. Uh, so for the shoulders, though, you have the sleeves that do rotate. So you do get a full rotation right here. Uh, and then you do get about 90 degrees out there, so pretty good. Uh, then you have a peg into the body and into the bicep, so you do get a little bit of a swivel right here. It's not bad. Uh, and then for the elbows, double jointed, you get better than 90 degrees, pretty good. Uh, and it does swivel at the top of the elbow and at the bottom right here, so not bad. Uh, funny thing though, because of how it's sculpted, the arm can't be completely straight. So this is as straight as it'll go, so it's kind of unusual. Uh, and then for the wrist, we have that hinged ball with the peg right here. So pretty standard for this line. Unfortunately, the way that it's sculpted makes the articulation fairly limited. Uh, so again, it, it can rotate on the inside, but look how deep it is inside that joint there. And, and the sleeve is a little soft, but it's not gonna do that much. So, I mean, when you have it in there, this is as much as you're gonna get like up and down and like, uh, like this way. You could rotate it, you'd have to like take it off, rotate it, and then put it back on. And so you get a little bit down, but not much at all. So I would say this is one of the biggest problems or biggest flaws of this figure, is the wrist articulation is like almost non-existent. Uh, for the ab right here, we have a single ball joint right here. So not bad, as you can see, the rotation is pretty decent. Here it is going back. So pretty good, but you do get some gapping. And then here it is going forward. Actually pretty decent. Let me get that to zoom out. So, not bad. You get some side to side. Uh, so the waist is weird though. Um, it is a ball joint, but I don't know. I guess with the way that it's sculpted, it's like pointed right here. I get almost no articulation. This piece is floating, by the way, but I just can't get it to rotate. I don't know if it's my figure or if it's the figure in general, but I cannot move it at all. I do get some side to side. So it's there, but no rotation for whatever reason. So be wary of that. And you notice too, uh, his tail or these coattails um, in the manga, they should just be together, but I guess they're separate just so you can get better articulation here. And they are on this ball hinge right here. So they do go up. So they do get out of the way and they are painted nicely on the inside with shading. Uh, so you could rotate them technically, right? Let me see. So the hinge, do they rotate? In theory, they should. Yeah, well, they, they come out like this pretty easily. Okay. So there is that. It does look kind of weird, though, because, again, it's just it's not supposed to be like that. So they're just flaps, but they're there. Uh, let's get them out of the way a little bit, though. For the hips, we have really pretty standard joints, though. Uh, so here it is going out to the side at its maximum. Here it is going forward. So pretty good. You do get a thigh swivel right here. Pretty decent. And then you get double jointed knees right here. Pretty good. Uh, and then for the ankles, it is pretty limited thanks to the sculpt. You have these pants that come out so far and they're flared out, but it's just so deep in there that this is as much as you're gonna get. So a little bit going back pretty much none going forward. You do have a toe hinged, but it's really like floppy. And then you can get an ankle rocker. You just have to like get in there and mess with it a little bit, uh, which I'm not gonna do for now. Uh, and also this A right here, it is glued to the back. Uh, and then this piece is soft, so it does move around a little bit. All right. Um, so overall, my impression, uh, well, let's talk about the paint and sculpt actually. So it's, mostly just one color um but i gotta say it looks really good i think that's actually the strength of this figure is that it looks 
really, really nice. You have, whoa, uh, you have this nice shading on the inside of the coat, which is really cool. You have this golden trim down here, which is really nice. You even have these details in the shoe, even though it's hidden for the most part. And this big A, this big Avenger sign, <laughs> looks pretty cool. And these little like straps down his shirt look really, really nice, and they're painted very cleanly. And you even have the gold buttons at the very end right there that are painted nicely. So it looks great. Um, the only issue is that the articulation is really weird. I don't know. Like, the range of motion in certain places is pretty good. But just the way that it's designed makes it just difficult to handle. Like, stuff gets in the way for some reason. So like this hair, while well, you're trying to move the arm, will get in the way. Like this coat, you'll have to move it out of the way. So I have mixed feelings about this. Um, it fits the character, because the character himself doesn't really move into really crazy dynamic poses, so it works well there. It's just as a figure, sometimes it's kind of hard. Uh, ooh, something that I do want to say though is that the face is painted really, really nicely. Really nice detail in the eyes, really clean paint on the lips though. So appearance is great. Um, whether or not I recommend it, let me see. If you're a fan of part 5, uh, it's a pretty solid figure though because of how the character works and how a stand works. Yeah, you have a lot of opportunities to like mix and match figures from different characters and it would be like part of his power. So there is that. Um, as a representation of the character, I think it's actually pretty solid. Um, plus, since the figure is not that popular, it's actually very cheap and fairly easy to find. I think sometimes I see it like up for like $20 and things like that, so it's actually pretty good. Um, if you're kind of a casual fan of JoJo, you could pass. It's just, again, not a popular character. It's kind of niche, uh, but it does look pretty cool. Uh, anyway, enough about that, though. Uh, that kind of does it for this review. So if you enjoyed, feel free to uh, give me a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. I'm going to put this guy in some posts at the end. All right, thanks, guys.